In this video, we are going to examine how to solve for the Nash equilibrium of continuous games by finding players' best response functions using calculus. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain what a Nash equilibrium is and find the Nash equilibrium of a strategic game, calculate a player's best reply function in a continuous strategic game, and use player's best reply functions to find Nash equilibria of strategic games. One quick note before we continue. Some textbooks use the term best reply function and others use the term best response function. These terms mean the same thing and I have a tendency to use them interchangeably. So remember, no matter which term I use, I mean the same thing. Let's start by reviewing the definition of a Nash equilibrium. A strategy profile is a Nash equilibrium of a game if each player's strategy maximizes his or her payoff given the strategies employed by the other players. Thus, at a Nash equilibrium, each player's strategy is a best response to every other player's strategy. For this reason, you will sometimes hear a Nash equilibrium described as a mutual best response. Because of this characteristic of the Nash equilibrium, we can use the tool of best response functions to solve for the Nash equilibrium of a game. There are two ways to find best response functions, graphically and using calculus. In the video that preceded this one, we worked through two examples of how to use graphical methods to find best response functions and solve for the Nash equilibria of games. In the rest of this video, we will use calculus to find best response functions and solve for the Nash equilibrium of a strategic game. Let's start with an example. Consider the following two-player game. Each player must choose a non-negative number. We will call player 1's choice A1 and player 2's choice A2. Each player's payoff is a function of both their own choice and the choice of the other player. We describe players' payoffs using their utility functions, which, as you can see, are a function of both A1 and A2. Player 1's utility equals A1 times the quantity A2 minus A1. Player 2's utility equals A2 times the quantity 1 minus A1 minus A2. Our task is to find the Nash equilibrium or equilibria of this game. Remember, there might be more than one Nash equilibrium. Before we jump in to solving the game, it is helpful to consider exactly what each player's problem is. Each player's problem is to choose a number that maximizes their own utility given what the other player is doing. Thus, the best response function will describe what number each player should choose to maximize their utility as a function of the other player's choice. Given this, let's take a minute to examine each player's utility function in more detail. Let's start with player 1's utility. Player 1's utility equals A1 times the quantity A2 minus A1. If we multiply this out, we get that player 1's utility equals A1 times A2 minus A1 squared. Hopefully, you see that because of the negative A1 squared term, if we graph this function, it will be shaped like an upside-down parabola. This parabola will cross the horizontal axis at two points, where A1 equals 0 and where A1 equals A2. Player 1's task is to find the value of A1 that is associated with the top of the parabola. This number will also be a function of A2. Player 2's utility function also has a negative A2 squared term in it, so it is also shaped like an upside-down parabola. 
The only difference is that player 2's utility function crosses the horizontal axis at 0 and where a2 equals 1 minus a1. Player 2's problem is to find the value of a2 that is associated with the maximum value of their utility. This value will also be a function of a1. So, both players essentially have the same problem. Each player must find the number associated with the maximum value of their utility function. How do we find the value that maximizes functions such as these? The answer, of course, is calculus. With that background, we can proceed to the steps to solve the problem. First, take the partial derivative of player 1's utility with respect to a1, set the resulting equation equal to 0, and solve for a1. Your solution will describe a1 as a function of a2. You have just found player 1's best response function. Then we do the same thing for player 2. Finally, we find the values of a1 and a2 that make both best response functions true simultaneously. This solution will be the Nash equilibrium of the game. Okay, let's solve the problem. First, we take the partial derivative of player 1's utility with respect to a1. Then, we set the derivative equal to 0 and solve for a1. We get that a1 equals a2 divided by 2. This is player 1's best response function. It tells us that in equilibrium, Player 1's optimal choice is always a number that is half as big as whatever player 2 picks. Then we do the same thing for player 2. Take the partial derivative of player 2's utility with respect to a2, set equal to 0, and solve. The equation we get describes player 2's best reply to whatever player 1 chooses their best response function. To find the Nash equilibrium, we solve for the values of a1 and a2 that make both best response functions true simultaneously. That means we need to solve a system of two equations and two unknowns. Substituting the equation for a1 into the equation for a2 we get that a2 equals 1 half minus a2 over 4. Solving for a2, we get that a2 equals 2 fifths and a1 equals 1 fifth. This is the Nash equilibrium of this game. At this point, you may be saying to yourself, wait a second. If these two players are playing simultaneously, then how could they ever find the Nash equilibrium of this game? If I am player 1, I may know what I should choose, half of what player 2 chooses, but how do I know what player 2 will choose? What if player 2 makes a mistake? Well, one answer to that question is that since this is a game of perfect information, not only do you know your payoff function, you know player 2's payoff function, and you can calculate player 2's best reply function just as easily as player 2 can. Thus, in principle, you can both figure out each other's solution to the game, as well as your own. If you don't like that answer, then it is worth considering what the best reply functions say about play away from the equilibrium outcome. To see what happens away from the Nash equilibrium, it is helpful to graph both best reply functions. Remember that player 1's best reply function is a1 equals a2 over 2, and player 2's best reply function is a2 equals the quantity 1 minus a1 over 2. To graph the best reply functions, we create a set of axes and put player 1's possible strategies on the horizontal axis and player 2's strategies on the vertical axis. The graph of player 1's best reply function will be a line coming from the origin with a slope of 2, since a2 is always twice as big as a1.
Player 2's best reply function will have a y-intercept of 1 half and a slope of negative 1 half. The Nash equilibrium occurs at the intersection of these two lines. But what happens if a player chooses a strategy that is not part of the Nash equilibrium? Suppose, for example, that player 1 chooses a number larger than 1 fifth. We can use player 2's best reply function to see what their best reply to this strategy is. We can see that in this case, player 2 will play a number that is less than 2 fifths. We can then use player 1's best reply function to see what player 1's best reply to player 2's strategy is. Then, we can find player 2's best reply to this new strategy by player 1. Then we can find player 1's best, strategy, best reply to this, and so on. What you see is that with each successive play, the outcome gets closer to the Nash equilibrium of the game. This is another useful way to think about the Nash equilibrium. Not that it is the outcome that players arrive at immediately, but that it is what they will converge on after several rounds of play. This type of convergence to the Nash equilibrium outcome is also often what we see in experiments testing how actual people play these games. This concludes this video on using calculus to solve for the Nash equilibrium of a continuous game. Thank you for watching.